All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to Diabetes Talk. I'm your host, Charlie O'Connell, and we are broadcasting live from the Glucose Zone studio here tonight. And tonight's topic is gut health for people living with diabetes. Now, this is an incredibly interesting topic. The team here at Glucose Zone has done an amazing job of putting together a really, really rich, complete set of information for you to ponder, consider, and think about how it might affect your diabetes. And I can't wait to share this information with you. And I do have to do a special shout out to Lorian Cher and Laura Joseph, who are two of our really, really founding members here at Glucosone, and they are experts, experts in nutrition. And they did a great job in putting this information together. So let's get right into it. Okay, so the first thing is understanding that people who, have di people who have diabetes may have altered microflora in their intestines that, pre that prevents proper uh, positioning and feedback and functioning. And understanding what these microflora are is first off just going to be an eye-opening thing and that's really what the goal here is of tonight's talk is. And if I stumble over my words, I want to ask for your guys' apology because some of these words, some of these terms, some of these concepts are very, very challenging to pronounce, never mind understand. So let's basically get right into it. The first interesting fact to understand is there are over 1,000 different species of microflora that exist in your gut and specifically in your intestines. And altogether, the, the gut microbes, which is what they're called, weigh anywhere from between two to five pounds. Those microbes begin to colonize in your intestines as you're developing in the womb and during birth. So these microbes are a funda fundamental part of your actual existence, okay? Now, an important thing to understand is that the more the diverse population of microbes that exist in your gut, generally speaking, the better for your health. And the way that you increase the diversity of microbes in your intestines is through diverse eating and food habits, okay? Now, the microbiome that exists in your body helps your body in many, many different ways. And it starts off literally with digesting breast milk. So some of the bacteria that first begins to grow inside a baby's gut and intestines are called, and this is a tricky one, bifidobacteria. Okay? And their role is to digest the sugars that exist in breast milk. Okay? They also help in digesting fiber. Certain bacteria digest fiber, producing short-chain fatty acids, which are important for gut health. Okay? The gut microbiome is also important to your immune system, and it, it helps to control how your immune system works. By communicating with the immune cells, the gut microbiome can control how your body is responding to infection. So this is a really, really interesting concept to understand is that your immune system, your endocrine system, they interact with these gut microbiomes and microbes on an almost constant basis. All right. Now, as relates specifically to diabetes, a high microbial diversity is generally associated with health while lower diversity is, is linked and associated with both type 1 and type 2 diabetes, which is an interesting fact. In people who, have, uh, who develop type 1 diabetes, studies have shown a decrease in microbial diversity immediately before diagnosis. Poor gut health can also lead and may affect the development of type 2 diabetes. And this is a really, really interesting thing. There's something called glucagon-like polypeptides, which are also known as GLPs. And what glucagon-like polypeptides do is they signal your brain to indicate, satiate, uh, <laughs> to indicate that you're full. And 
the neurotransmitters that are associated with that may be negatively affected by poor gut health, okay? So here's why that's interesting. Satiety, that was the word that I was looking for, okay? So glucagon-like polypeptides, which are called GLPs, there are type 2 diabetes medications that are based on G the functioning of GLPs. One of the most uh, common brand name ones known is Victoza. Victoza is a GLP-1, okay? So poor gut health development and generally speaking, the, micro the microbes in your gut can affect and are associated with GLP neurotransmission. All right, now, how do we, the next question is, so now that we kind of have an understanding of the role of um, microbes in your gut, and generally speaking, this whole concept that there are, there's a whole microbial um, colony or environment that exists inside your intestines, how do we actually improve it? And this is really, really where <clears throat> there's some great information that we can share. The first one is, it's well accepted and research has proven that human populations with diets that are rich in complex carbohydrates have more diverse microbiomes, okay, or microbial environments, while populations with long-term high-fat, high-sugar, low-fiber diets have less diverse microbiomes. So the first thing is, guys, is this is really getting into the quality of the carbohydrate that you're consuming. And on a personal antidote, I have really, really noticed that when I consume carbs from vegetables, and they can be starchy vegetables, so things like corn, things like sweet potatoes, basically starchy root vegetables, my body reacts really, really well to those types of carbohydrates. And generally speaking, when I eat meals containing those types of carbohydrates, I tend to have great diabetes results, even though the actual content of the carbohydrate is quite high. Whereas the exact opposite occurs when I eat foods that are highly processed, high in fat, high in processed sugar. Uh, I really, really struggle with that. And that's something that I want you to think about. Are there different types of carbohydrates that you have more success with than others? And if that's the case, that's something that you should really, really embrace as uh, basically information that you can use to make better decisions. All right. Now, another interesting thing is... A diet that's rich in whole grains leads to an increase in microbial diversity. And the reason why that is, is whole grains contain a variety of carbohydrates that act as probiotics that encourage the growth of many different bacterial species in the gut. And you may have heard the advice to consume probiotics. That's what that's actually re related to, is in the probiotics encourage the growth of bacterial species in the gut. Eating a diverse range of foods leads to a diverse microbiome. And ultimately, and we talk a lot about this actually in a little bit of a different way. We l try to encourage you to focus on vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. But th the recommendation is really ultimately the same. As we want to encourage you, and you should be looking to consume a diverse, a whole diverse group of healthy, delicious, and nutritious vitamin mineral-based foods that are filled with lots of different colors, okay? Different types of vegetables, different types of legumes, different types of fruit, and lots of fiber. When you eat foods like that, okay, you are promoting a healthy microbiome. Now, let's talk about the difference between uh, probiotics and prebiotics. So prebiotics are a type of fiber that stimulates the growth of healthy bacteria. And prebiotic-rich foods include vegetables, whole grains, beans, seeds, nuts, fruits. Generally speaking, guys, nuts, seeds and nuts can be a great, great 
food resource for people living with diabetes for two reasons. Number one, they usually contain lots of healthy fat. Number two, they have a, tend to have a minimal impact on your glucose levels. So they are very, very low glycemic index. And now, as we're learning, they can really have a positive impact from a prebiotic perspective. So another, another um, <clears throat> vitamin and mineral and t class of food that you want to be focusing in on, and that's you want to be eating foods that are rich in polyphenols. So polyphenols are plant compounds that are found in things like red wine, green tea, dark chocolate, olive oil, fruits, vegetables. They're broken down by the, by, by the uh, microbiome to stimulate healthy bacterial growth. That's an interesting thing that I didn't really understand. And one of the things that I love exploring when we're doing these talks is seeing how different foods that seem to come from a variety of different places can contain essential elements or essential things that our body needs. Okay, another thing that you can do is if you are a woman that is uh, basically has a child, an early, early, uh, an infant essentially, breastfeeding newborns for at least six months has shown to be incredibly important not only for the, for the development of the gut microbiome, okay, but also has shown that uh, children who are breastfed for a, a longer than six months have less of a risk of developing type 1 diabetes. All right, now let's talk about probiotic supplements. So we talked about prebiotics, now let's talk about probiotics. Probiotics are live bacteria, okay? And that's the key, the key term, the key thing to understand here. Probiotics are live bacteria that can help restore the gut to a healthy state after dysbiosis, okay? And they do this by reseeding it with healthy microbes. And basically, you can purchase probiotics, uh, and the recommendation is to purchase probiotics that are stored in the refrigerated section. The reason why they're stored in the refrigerated section is because they're live. And that actually, generally speaking, I would recommend that if you are going to consume bread on a daily basis, you want to be consuming bread that is uh, kept in the refrigerated section because bread that's kept in the refrigerated section means that it's sprouted grain, that it has live probiotics in it, and it's much, much, much healthier for you. All right, another one that's really, really interesting is limiting the intake of artificial sweeteners. Now, this particular piece of information I found really, really interesting. There's some evidence that's shown that artificial sweeteners like aspartame, which is found in diet soda, can actually increase blood sugar levels by stimulating the growth of unhealthy bacteria in the gut microbiome, okay? The last piece of advice, this is very, very important to understand. Generally speaking, you wanna avoid taking antibiotics and only take antibiotics when it's absolutely necessary. And here's the reason why. Antibiotics kill many bad, but also good bacteria that exist in the gut microbiome and they can contribute possibly to weight gain and antibiotic resistance, okay? So it's just, of course, if, if you have a medical necessity to take antibiotics, which, you know, definitely, definitely can and will happen at some point, of course you should follow the guidance of your doctor. But having said that, you should understand that antibiotics can have a negative impact on your gut microbiome and you should only take antibiotics when it has been prescribed by your doctor and basically you want to limit the taking of antibiotics as much as possible. All right, so that was a, uh, I just hit you guys with a ton of information about generally speaking 
gut health and living with diabetes, I want to encourage you to do your own research about the gut microbiome. Find out what probiotics are available to you, what probiotics may be helpful to you. Understand the difference between probiotics, prebiotics, okay? And really, really start to explore a diverse diet, all right? And on that note, guys, we're going to call it a day. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I can't wait to see you in the glucose zone.